What on earth are we looking at here? Could it be a beautiful bouquet of budding roses? Could it be some CGI thing? Could it be microbes? Uh, yeah. Yep, it's microbes. Welcome, my friends, to another fantastic microbe episode. I know it's been a while, and I'm very excited to announce that I am coming back, and we are going to be exploring the microscopic world together once again. I had to take a break for a little bit because uh, I got a full-time job. I moved from being a stay-at-home dad to a full-time worker, so uh, now I'm just kind of finding time in between for this. Uh, but yeah, so here's me, proof that I still exist, and uh, showing uh, just right under this bridge is where I got this jar of stuff. Now, it was really murky, and so I decided to let it sit for about 24 hours, and I came back and it was a lot clearer, and uh, I could see there were some water fleas and maybe some other small crustaceans, so I figured this would probably be a really fun uh, collection of things to look at. Now, to my dismay, uh, these water fleas and stuff were proving very difficult to catch. I tried multiple times, but they just kept on evading me. So I decided to let this sit for just a little bit longer, and uh, that's when I found something uh, pretty cool. Okay, see this tiny white speck in the middle of the screen? That white speck right there is a colony of microorganisms that is visible, if I reduce my focus, um, pretty much to the naked eye, but you wouldn't really recognize it as a colony of microorganisms because it just looks like white junk. I'm specifically pointing to this little guy right here. Um, it is attached to the mud, the substrate here, by one long stalk. And uh, if I try to pick it up with a pipette here, then uh, just watch what happens here. Let's see if I can get this. I try to suck it up, but it does not go. It goes up a little bit. Let's try a third time here. It will not uh, go up. Um, no matter how hard I try, there's another one here. I try to suck it up. It does not get sucked up. It's really tricky. I got a bunch of water here, but uh, none of this little guy. I finally was able to get one. Here it is on the slide. There are two air bubbles and it's just the little smudge in between the two air bubbles. So this is the thing that I was showing at the very beginning of the episode and it is a uh, colonial species of uh, paratric ciliate. And um, the particular species is, uh, I'm not exactly sure, uh, it could be what is known as zoothamnium, or another one is epistylus. Uh, both of those, if, if you look them up, um, and I'll have the names in the description, uh, they look pretty similar to these. Now, uh, here's one where I kind of flicked the side of the microscope, and uh, they contracted for a second and started to... Uh, you know, reach back out again. And uh, it's a pretty cool thing that they can do. Uh, I switched over to dark field for a little bit to see if I could get any new information about them. And, uh, you know, because sometimes you can see more with bright field, sometimes you can see more with dark field. Uh, but because there were so many layers to this uh, group of, uh, to this colony, it was kind of tricky. You could see there was a lot of, of uh, blurring of the light, so uh, it wasn't really worth uh, looking at under this way, so I kind of switched back over to Brightfield for most of this. So paratric colonies like this, and uh, like Zoothamnium and Epistylus, are commonly known in uh, the aquarium community to be pests, and that is because they can attach themselves to basically anything, and they'll uh, often attach themselves to fish, 
Um, I've, I've videotaped some attached to some, like, microscopic crustaceans, and uh, they don't necessarily cause disease, but they bring a lot of bacteria towards the animal. Now, here where it gets a little bit colorful, this is when I'm experimenting with some polarized light. I have a couple of filters and some uh, scotch tape in between that is uh, bending the light to just kind of make it cooler. Uh, sometimes you, it adds a little bit more contrast, and uh, other times it just makes for a cool backdrop. And uh, honestly, I was just trying to get a really cool thumbnail for this. So uh, feel free to skip ahead if you want, but uh, otherwise you can enjoy the colors for, for another little bit. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, they're commonly found on uh, fish in aquariums and stuff, and there are several different ways that you can treat the fish. And uh, one of the recommended ways is uh, you can add a little bit of uh, salt uh, to the water and uh, just uh, increase the salt concentration. Another thing is, uh, in order to prevent this from happening, you could be aerating your water a little bit more, uh, maybe get a better filter in your aquarium, and uh, there, there are some other solutions out there as well if, if you Google them. Or if you're a fellow microbe hunter like me and you don't want to get rid of them, uh, eventually they'll just kind of start showing up. Uh, the thing about looking for microbes is that, you know, you never know what you're going to find, and so it's really just water plus time, and you'll end up finding some really cool stuff. So that first one that I was able to get on the slide was, uh, I, I almost pretty much got it on there by accident. The second time I tried and struggled several times, I ended up finally getting it with a larger pipette. And uh, when I put it underneath the slide, I noticed something a little bit different with this one. First of all, this one was kind of fanned out, and it could have just been the way that I laid it out. But uh, the other thing that I noticed is that there wasn't a lot of water or debris uh, swimming towards these guys, which means that I probably killed them <laughs> when I put the cover slip on. And sure enough, uh, when I zoomed in closer, uh, you can see that there is not uh, any living uh, examples here. So it's kind of sad for them, but a little bit uh, beneficial for us because we can observe them in a little bit more detail without all of that movement. Uh, for example, in just a second, I'm going to be showing a slide that, uh, yeah, right here, this shows uh, kind of the basic layout of a similar looking organism. This is uh, Vorticella that we just looked at. And uh, with, you know, looking back and forth with that, you can see kind of like uh, where the macronucleus is and where like uh, some vacuoles are, like different parts of the body of uh, these guys. So uh, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, you can also see the cilia or like the cilia are like the little small hairs that spin around. And uh, but in these cases, they aren't. Now, uh, when I zoomed around, I did find a couple that were still moving. Uh, like one or two out of this whole thing. So uh, they might be able to divide and break off eventually and continue living on, or they might just die with the rest of this colony. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so here, here's one that's still moving, kind of in the background, now in the foreground. And you can see that the cilia is beating in a wave-like pattern and uh, kind of spins it up into a vortex into its mouth. And, uh, yeah, that's how it feeds. But it's kind of cool to see some living ones right next to uh, some non-living ones, so you can have, have that example. Now, I know I showed a diagram of Vorticella. I couldn't find a diagram for these guys, uh, but the only thing that separates them is that the, the Vorticella are, uh, you know, single individuals, and uh, these guys are a colony that are all kind of attached together. But uh, yeah, that'll pretty much wrap it up for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope to see you guys soon.